Hi, Andrew Wolf here. This is the beginning of a series of videos on the Nephron. In this video, I'm going to provide a overview of the structure and function of the Nephron. And then I will zero in on the glomerulus and talk about the structure and function of the glomerulus. And then in, in future videos, I'll talk about the proximal and distal tubules, the loop of Henle, and, uh, and the concentration of urine. OK, so here we have um, a picture of the glomerulus taken from uh, Gray's Anatomy. And um, we have here at the beginning, here let me use a brighter marker, the whole process starts here at the glomerulus. And here at the glomerulus we have a artery running in, which is the afferent arteriole, and then we have an efferent arteriole coming out. And the efferent arteriole um, forms a, um, divides up into a plexus of capillaries. So the, let me, let me talk again from the beginning. So we have the afferent arterial running in. It, it uh, breaks up into a bed of capillaries within the glomerulus. Then we have the efferent arterial coming out. And then we spread into another second capillary bed from the efferent. So this is unusual. Um, there are two capillary beds interconnected by the efferent arteriole. And this picture doesn't show it, but this capillary bed is actually intertwined around the rest of the nephron, the tubules, the loop of Henle, and the collecting ducts. Now, interestingly enough here, in this picture, it shows two different nephrons. This one here at the top is a cortical nephron. And you can see the beginning of what's called a juxtamedullary nep nephron. And it's interesting to know that there are two different nephrons. And the major difference in their function really has to do with their vasculature um, and the position of the loop of Henle. So this one here you know, is going to sort of wind around. And it's going to have a very deep loop of Henle that runs right alongside the collecting ducts inside the medulla of the kidney. So the, the vasculature of the cortical nephron is really just involved with the, um, the excretion and secretion and reabsorption of electrolytes. But the vasculature of the juxtamedullary nephron, because it's flowing down by the, uh, these deep Loop, this deep loop of Henle and the collecting ducts has a very important role in the concentration of urine. And we'll talk about how that works in the future. So um, I want you to be aware here that there, uh, the kidney works because of very close interaction between the blood flow around in the capillaries around the tubules of the nephron and the uh, filtrate that is running through the tubules of the nephron. Okay, so that's sort of an introduction to the blood supply. Now, when blood flows in through the afferent arteriole, um, a fraction of that blood is going to be filtered in the glomerulus, and that's what we're going to talk about in the rest of this video. So a fraction, it's usually, uh, the fraction is usually around 20 to 30 percent of the plasma. Well, and this is turned into filtrate. And this filtrate works, winds its way through, you, know, you can't really see that yellow in there. Let me make that an orangish color. So the filtrate winds its way through the proximal tubule and down into the loop of Henle and back up through the distal convoluted tubule and into the collecting duct. Now, in the, the proximal tubule, we're starting a process of reabsorption, 
of electrolytes is this initial filtrate. The initial filtrate coming right out of the glomerulus essentially looks just like plasma without the proteins. And that's because the glomerulus um, has slits in it that are relatively large that let just about everything through up to the size of large proteins and it also has a um, very strong negative charge that, that uh, suppresses the passage of large charge molecules, i.e. proteins. So it's sort of specially adapted to not allow proteins to pass. So a healthy glomerulus will not have uh, allowed proteins into the filtrate. So anyways, at the beginning of the proximal tubule, the plasma looks just the filtrate looks just like plasma without the protein. So it has, you know, the same amount of sodium as the blood, 140 or so milliequivalents per liter, the same amount of potassium as the plasma, you know, 4.5 or so milliequivalents per liter. Now, the body needs to conserve many of these things, so what's it going to do? It's going to reabsorb them. Now, and then some of the water is going to tag along with the sodium. And obviously there's other electrolytes that are um, that are reabsorbed as well, calcium, magnesium, and the list goes on. Now, the other thing that's occurring in addition to reabsorption is secretion, because there's some things like urea and larger molecules um, many drug metabolites, hormone metabolites, um, that actually don't get filtered because they're sort of, they're too big and they're, and they're too charged to make it through the glomerulus, so they actually need to be excreted in, in the tubules of the kidney. Um, so these processes really occur significantly in the proximal tubules and in the distal tubules. The loop of Henle is very interesting part of the kidney because it is actually involved very significantly in the concentration of urine. But interestingly enough, the urine that enters the loop of Henle and the urine that leaves the loop of Henle uh, is actually, actually has about the same concentration, the same osmolarity. In fact, at the end of the loop of Henle, at this distal end of the loop of Henle, it is actually a little bit less concentrated. It's a little bit more hypotonic. So how is the loop of Henle involved with the concentration of urine? Well, it's actually, what happens is the loop of Henle is, is creating a very high concentration of electrolytes around it. And so even though the urine that is leaving the, dis the loop of Henle is not very concentrated, the blood, the plasma in the vasorecta, the capillaries around the loop of Henle, and the interstitial fluid in the spaces in the tissues around the loop of Henle, um, particularly near this hairpin turn, are very, very highly concentrated. And what, what happens is we have our collecting ducts here and that are passing right by this very highly concentrated areas. And these collecting ducts have lots and lots of receptors for ADH. And when these collecting ducts um, are triggered by ADH, they insert aquaporins into uh, the membrane of the collecting duct. And those aquaporins allow water to be pulled back in to this very highly concentrated um, interstitial fluid near the hairpin turn of the loop of Henle. So again, the loop of Henle does not itself concentrate urine, but it sets up the situation where urine can be finally concentrated to its highest concentration in the collecting ducts on the way out of the kidney. Okay, so the concentration of urine actually kind of occurs in this area here, the hairpin turn of the loop of Henle. 
And again, this, this actually occurs much more in the juxtamedullary nephron. So I should circle this area here and because that's just where it happens. Concentration. So we have sort of three thing, three major processes happening, happening in the nephron at three different places. First, we have filtration in the glomerulus. Number one. Number two, we have reabsorption and secretion in the distal tub convoluted tubules and the proximal convoluted tubules and then third in the collecting ducts and the vasorecta and interstitial fluids around the hairpin turn of the loop of Henle we have concentration of urine. So that is the function of the nephron in a nutshell. Okay now I am going to break this video up so in my next video I'm going to talk specifically about the glomerulus and um, the formation of filtrate.